first we have the oscillator section. The oscillator section includes a knob for frequency, a knob for waveform selection, and a listen button so we can hear specifically what the oscillator is doing. Right now I have it set to the sine wave waveform, which is pretty cool because a lot of analog synthesizers don't include a sine wave, but from an educational perspective, it's awesome to have one. Here's what the sine wave sounds like. Pretty good pitch range. And of course you can make selections of individual pitches. If you wanted to get really creative, you could play it like a theremin and choose specific pitches. So that was the sine wave. Let's listen to the triangle wave. Pretty nice triangle wave. It's uh, a little bit buzzy, which I like. Next we have the square wave. And then, finally, the sawtooth wave. Next we have the modulation section, which is technically the low frequency oscillator. So you've set your oscillator to a pitch and a waveform that you're happy with. Next thing you do, most reasonably, is you go over to the modulation section. It's got a frequency knob, it's got a waveform knob, the same waveforms that you have available uh, in the high frequency oscillator. You've got a modulation amount, which is helpful, obviously, and a listen button so you can hear what's happening with the modulation. Now, while you're listening to what happens with the modulation, you can always press the button to hear what's going on with the oscillator. So if your mod modulation is crazy and you're like, hmm, what waveform am I on and what uh, is the pitch setting, you can always hear what it is by pressing the listen button on the oscillator, which is, from an educational standpoint, absolutely awesome because you can see sequentially what's happening from the oscillator directly into the modulation and you can compare. For example, we have it set to a sine wave. Let's hear what it does. Now see what's really cool about this particular modulation oscillator or low frequency oscillator as we more, as we more typically call them is that it goes into the audio range. So you get these really cool sounds. Now a standard analog uh, low frequency oscillator usually goes up like that high. And so you don't get into the interesting distorted sounds like this. A square wave. And say you're listening to the square wave set right here. And you're like, wait, what waveform do I have going here? You can always go back to the oscillator and then you can compare back and forth. Okay, let's hear the sawtooth wave. You have a wide variety of modulation opportunities. While you're messing with the modulation, you can always mess with the waveform and the frequency of the oscillator. While you're playing with those, you can be listening to the modulation and hear the changes that are made, which is excellent.
Next, we have the filter. You have a frequency control, a resonance control, and a listen button. It's pretty straightforward. Now, the way this synthesizer works is we're having a sequence here of the oscillator going into modulation, going into the filter. So what you're going to hear in the filter, if you have the modulation amount turned up, is the modulation output. If you have the modulation output turned down, it's not going to be modulating and you're just going to hear the pure oscillator. So here's a demonstration of that at first here. Um, So obviously, um, I'm just going to turn the modulation down, but I wanted to demonstrate that if you had the modulation up, that's what you're going to hear in the filter. Right now, so we're just getting the straight sawtooth output. Turned all the way down. You know, it's cutting most of that sound away. As we turn it up, So then if we had the square wave, it would sound like this. Of course, triangle and sine wave are not going to give you ideal waveforms for filtering, so there's no point really playing them, so I'm just going to skip those. And uh, so we've heard what the filter does to the sawtooth, um, but also we have resonance here. So we can turn the resonance, we'll say, halfway up. You can hear kind of the resonance effect there. Turn the resonance up so you can hear it. And that's basically what you can do with all the waveforms is uh, demonstrate what the resonance does. The difference between the resonance off, the resonance on. Also, you can have a lot of fun with it once you have the modulation sources going. Next we have the envelope section, or the VCA, the VCA slash envelope section. And as you can probably see, we have attack, decay, sustain, release, and a trigger. And the amplifier over here, which is just simply a volume knob, which is fine. Uh, it shows very plainly that what we're doing is controlling the amplifier with the envelope. And uh, these settings are basically the same as any envelope settings. You can have a short attack, a medium decay, no sustain, and a short release. Turn up the attack. Decay. Turn down the decay. Turn up the sustain. Of course, start the release. So for a child learning about synthesis, and especially envelopes, which can be really confusing, it's just laid out right here, and every time you hit that trigger, you get a demonstration of what the change you've made sounds like. And then you can have fun by adding other aspects, like messing with the oscillator. Adding modulation. And of course, at any point, if you want to hear what's going on, you can press any of these buttons. I'm going to do that to turn the volume down because the output is louder. So you can hear what's going on with each individual section. And that's very helpful. Okay, the next thing is this section here, which is 
Um, well, it's a modulation section, and it's related to the envelope. So uh, basically, first you have envelope control of the filter. What happens is, as you can see, I have it set straight up. If you have it turned to the left, it's a negative version of the envelope, and to the right, a positive version of the envelope. So let's set the filter. Let's set a, an envelope that's going to have an effect. Of course, we have to trigger it from the envelope down below so that the section works. We'll turn on the positive envelope for the filter. Depending on your filter setting, you can definitely hear the effect that the envelope is having on the filter. And of course, if you turn the resonance up, that effect is going to be um, accentuated. Of course, at this point, the envelope is acting both as the modifier of the amplifier as well as the filter, because there's only one envelope, but that's okay. Many synthesizers work in that way. And then we can turn it to the negative and see what effect that has. Of course, there's less amount as you approach the center. That's without, and then we'll go negative. So you can see, you can get some really cool effects by using the envelope to control the filter, and they've set it up so that you can do that. Um, we also have the control modulation uh, control here, which, and this is very cool, the envelope can also modify the modulation. So it's basically, the envelope can control the speed of the low frequency oscillator. I don't know if you can hear that like I can hear it, but what it's actually doing is it starts off slow and gets faster depending on the attack. There we go. So you can affect the speed of the low frequency oscillator using the shape of the envelope, which is an excellent addition to this educational synthesizer. In this instance, you're showing the single waveform of the envelope and how that affects the speed of the modulation, which has its own speed, which is very interesting and educational for the kids. So as you can see, with all of these things together, not only can you create a lot of really cool sounds, but it's, it's an excellent demonstration for kids to see the natural relationships between the different modules of the synthesizer in a simple way with big knobs evenly you know with space between them so there's room to take in each section and understand what it's doing also you have all the indicator lights that say hey this is what you're doing right now let's take a look at some of the other aspects of this around the sides this particular volume knob controls the speakers so if we turn that apparently down, that's right, this device has built-in speakers on either side, which are very sightly and super cool. Also you'll notice that there are two audio outputs, which is excellent. Unlike the rest of what I've recorded, that's room sound you're hearing. And of course, there's a, another speaker on this side. In addition to that, you'll notice we have CV in and trigger in. So the novitiate can be controlled by a 
external synthesizer 